Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about stages of anesthesia. We'll basically be using the Gödel's classification. So what's the Gödel classification? So Gödel proposed a four-stage classification system to assess the depth of general anesthesia in 1937. This was designed for use with a single inhalational anesthetic ether. If you remember, if you have gone through a little bit of history, you should know that ether was the first anesthetic that they started using. And patients were medicated with morphine and atropine. So basically, there are four stages of anesthesia. So stage one is analgesia. Stage two is excitement. Stage three is surgical anesthesia. Stage four is medullary depression. So basically, when you get to surgical anesthesia stage, you will get to learn, as we're going to talk about in the future slides, will be that there are four stage, four phases under stage three. And this is where you can start performing surgery. And stage four is the stage you want to avoid getting to. So basically, let's look at the diagram now. So there are a few parameters that we look at. So there's respiration. There's ocular movement, pupil size, reflexes, skeletal muscle tone, blood pressure, heart rate, and the uses. So basically, stage one is analgesia. Remember we talked about it? Yeah. So what is stage one analgesia? So this is basically from beginning of injection of general anesthesia to loss of consciousness. So if you're able to look at the respiratory pattern, it's normal. Yeah, here. Yeah. Then ocular movement normal, pupil size is normal, eyelid reflexes are present, pharyngeal present, corneal present, light reflexes are present. Then the skeletal muscle tone is still there. Blood pressure is okay, heart rate is okay. Users, so you can do labor incisions and minor operations in this stage, in the analgesic stage. Then we go to stage two. So basically this is the stage of excitement or delirium. So this starts from loss of consciousness to onset of automatic breathing. Eyelash reflex disappears, but other reflexes remain intact and coughing, vomiting, and struggling may occur, due to which we call it delirium or excitement phase here. Respiration can be irregular with breath holding. So if you're going to compare the respiratory pattern here and here, there's a slight change, right? We're seeing that it's getting irregular. Then here, you're able to notice there'll be rolling eyeballs. Then if you look at the pupil size, they'll be slightly dilated compared to stage one. Then the eyelash reflex is going to disappear after this stage, right? Then remember we said that on breathing it will be irregular, holy irregular breaths. So if you can notice it here, then uses nil. Not really, we don't really have uses. So basically stage one where you can do labor incisions, then we get to stage three, which is basically our main stage where we want to get into for our surgical operations. So remember I told you stage three is divided into four stages. So stage three is the stage of surgical anesthesia. So when we look at plane one, so that is basically onset of automatic respiration to cessation of eyeball movements. Are you able to see? So this is whereby you're getting automatic respiration. You can see this here. Yeah. Then cessation of eyeball movements. You can notice this. Rolling eyeball movements have reduced. Eyelid reflex is lost, swelling reflex disappears, marked eyeball movement may occur, but conjunctival reflex is lost at the bottom of the plane. Sorry. So here we go. So if you're going to look at the eyeball, they're getting slightly constricted compared to plane two. Eyelid reflexes were already lost, pharyngeal reflexes are still present, corneal are present, and light reflex is still present. And this is, I think after this stage is where you can begin most of your surgical operations. Then when we go to stage two, so that is basically cessation of eyeball movements to beginning of paralysis of intercostal muscles. So are you able to see? Your muscles are now getting under paralysis, so you're unable to breathe on your own here. Laryngeal reflex is lost, although inflammation of the upper respiratory tract increases reflex irritability. Corneal reflex disappears. So if you're able to see this, you can see that the corneal reflex is now disappearing, right? 
Secretion of tears increases, and this is a useful sign of light anesthesia. Respiration is automatic and regular movement, and deep breathing is a response to skin stimulation disappears. So if you remember normally when you do a skin incision, not even a skin incision, when you just get a cut or something, you're able to see that the breath pattern changes, right? It increases and stuff like that. However, when you get to stage three, plan two, so there will be no response. Respiration will be automatic and regular. Then we get to plane three. So plane three, stage three, plane three. This is from beginning to completion of intercostal muscle paralysis. If you're able to see this, you have seen, right? So this is basically beginning to completion of intercostal muscle paralysis, diaphragmatic respiration persists, but this progressive intercostal paralysis. Pupils are dilated. Let me show you. Are you able to see pupils are dilated here? And light reflex is abolished. I don't know if you're able to see this. So the light reflex is abolished here. Then laryngeal reflex is lost in plain two. However, it can still be initiated by painful stimuli arising from the dilatation of the anus or cervix. This was the desired plan for surgery when muscle relaxants were not used. So if you're not using muscle relaxants, this is the desired spleen for surgery. So stage three, plane three, spleen three. Okay, however, nowadays it's occasionally reached. Most of the surgical operations will perform them in stage three, phase two, spleen two. Then what is spleen four? So that's basically from complete intercostal muscle paralysis to diaphragmatic paralysis. So here, yeah, remember here there was intercostal muscle paralysis, however, diaphragm, diaphragm was still intact. Here, if we go here, so this intercostal muscle paralysis as well as diaphragmatic paralysis. So this is a stage that you should not treat. So this is where you might get apnea. And then if you look at the pupils, they are dilated. There are no reflexes present. Involuntary movement, zero. BP is gone down. Heart rate might increase here. And however, it's never attempted. So we're not supposed to get to stage three, plane four, okay? Then I'm gonna talk about stage four. This is basically stoppage of respiration till death. If you remember here, stage three, plane four, we talked about there'll be apnea in stage three, plane four. So basically that is from stoppage of respiration till death. This may arise as a result of anesthetic overdose, which causes medullary paralysis with respiratory arrest and vasomotor collapse. So if you look at stage four, basically you can just look at the pupils. They are very dilated. And in other things, there is nothing here. So this is basically death, right? And this is a point you would never want to reach because once you get to, you know, the patient is gone. Okay, so one thing you need to know is you need to aim maximum is stage three, plane three. You should not go below, below that. So how do you know that you are already in stage three, plane three? You can look at the pupil size, it will be like this. If you see it's getting dilated, you already know that you're in danger and you should try to find a way to get away from it, not make it worse, okay? Because if it dilates further, Diaphragmatic paralysis occurs and the patient will go into apnea and die, right? So that's all about physiologic stages of anesthesia. However, we're just going to look at it as a summary. I hope you understood the diagram. So basically stages of anesthesia. Stage one is stage of analgesia or disorientation from beginning of injection of general anesthesia to loss of consciousness. Stage two, stage of excitement or delirium from loss of consciousness to onset of automatic breathing. Eyelash reflex disappear, but other reflexes remain intact and coughing, vomiting, and struggling may occur. Respiration can be irregular with breath holding. Then stage three, which is stage of surgical anesthesia, basically from onset of automatic respiration to respiratory paralysis. It is divided into four planes. So plane one is basically onset of automatic respiration to cessation of eyeball movements. Eyelid reflex is lost, swallowing reflex disappears. Marked eyeball movements may occur, but conjectural reflex is lost at the bottom of plane. Excuse me. Plane two, from cessation of eyeball movements to beginning of paralysis of intercostal muscles. Laryngeal reflex is lost, or the inflammation of the upper respiratory tract increases reflex irritability. 
Corneal reflux disappears, secretion of tears increases, a useful sign of light anesthesia. Respiration is automatic and regular movement and deep breathing as a response to skin stimulation, stimulation disappears. Plan 3. From beginning to completion of intercostal muscle paralysis, diaphragmatic respiration persists, but there is progressive intercostal paralysis. Pupils are dilated and light reflex is abolished. So if you go into stage 3, plane 3, I cannot overemphasize this part. You notice pupils are dilated and there is no light reflex. So you need to know that you should not go further from this. Because if you move to the next stage from here, the patient will go into apnea, which is not what you want, right? The laryngeal reflex is lost in plane 2, but it can still be initiated by painful stimuli arising from the dilatation of the anus or cervix. This was the desired plan for surgery when muscle relaxants were not used. Plan 4, from complete intercostal paralysis to diaphragmatic paralysis, which is apnea. Stage 4, from stoppage of respiration till death, anesthetic overdose caused medullary paralysis with respiratory arrest and vasomotor collapse. Pupils are widely dilated and muscles are relaxed. So this is basically a summary, a summary of what we've just talked about. So that's all about physiologic stages of anesthesia. If you like the video, please like, subscribe and comment. Thank you.